Hi, I'm Josh Brown. Welcome to Live from the Compound. Are you like most people under the impression that it's easy to pick stocks, outperform the market if you just get the right companies and own enough of them and hold on for long enough? Whose shtick is this? Why can't I just the, do it? And oh. Listen, I'm here with Michael Batnick. We're going to talk about concentrated portfolios, the agony and the ecstasy of concentrated portfolios. And I think you're going to learn a couple of really important things. Stick around. Mike, your post about um, concentrated portfolios, you're looking at this idea that um, you can just focus on buying the best st uh, stocks, the highest quality stocks, and potentially, if you give it a long enough period of time, outperform the index. But the work that you're referencing actually shows the opposite. Um, and the more stocks you own, the more of a chance you have to beat the index. Doesn't that seem counterintuitive? Mm, yeah, maybe. Well, let me tell you this. Stanley Druckenmiller, one of the, if not the greatest money manager of all time, said, I think diversification and all the stuff they're teaching at business school today is probably the most misguided concept everywhere. Diversification is misguided. The first thing I heard when I got in the business was bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs got slaughtered. I'm here to tell you I was a pig, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I think that that quote is like used all the time. Right. Oh, the pigs get slaughtered. And just like why diversification is bunk and, and how Druckenmiller, you know, the greatest, didn't believe in it. But why is but diversification many, being a pig? I don't understand. I don't understand the connection. He's basically those two saying things. like, why? If you have your best ideas, you got to go for it. If you have your best ideas, you should only own those. Why would you own your twenty-first best stock? I mean, or but your twenty-second best. But stock? it's the sort of thing that like sounds <laughs> obvious and makes it sound so easy. Like, well, but that 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 implies that your best idea is gonna actually. Or, no, that implies that you actually know what your best ideas are. Right. Like that implies that today in 2019, you know with any degree of certainty that in 2029, yeah, these were the stocks I should have concentrated on. How could you possibly? So what are your three best index fund ideas right now? <laughs> so, uh, so what this study did was it basically quantified dart throwing for stock picking. Okay, so explain that. When, when you, so when you, when you have a portfolio of 30 stocks – um, the chart that we're going to pop here is showing that um, over a 30-year period of time, and they randomized all these portfolios. I don't know if it was 30-year rolling periods, but this this was totally random. They did like a thousand simulations. It's in the post, which we'll link to in the notes. So simulations of different amounts, different amounts of stocks in different arrays, and then what was your probability of beating the S&P? By holding 30 stocks or 50 stocks. It was a Russell 3000. Stocks. Russell 3000. But so it went up. Uh, I don't know if I'm using monotonically here, but I hear it said a lot. <laughs> right. Monotonically? Yeah. Go ahead. So it went up like in, like linearly, I guess, is a better – The be more, more stocks, the higher the likelihood. Yeah. So at, at five stocks in the portfolio, you had just a 28% chance, a 29% chance. At 10, it was 35. At 15, it was 37. And it, it plateaued at 500. Where even if you picked 500 random stocks, you had a 48.4% chance of beating the market. But – the problem is that that just tells you the probability of outperforming. It doesn't tell you the magnitude of underperformance or outperformance. Oh, so if you skew. Just, yeah. So if you just picked one stock at random, the negative skew is like totally dominates. So one stock, on average, if you underperformed, you underperformed the benchmark by eleven point seven percent. If you outperformed, you over you outperformed by four point two percent. So your odds of winning big are way smaller than the chances that yeah. you're going to lose big. But here's here's my I guess beef is the wrong word, but here's the other side of this article that they don't show is so they're saying that because the winners are so concentrated, because set only seven percent of stocks had a thousand percent performance. So oh, so let's before you say what you're going to say, let's let's just explain that. Of all the stocks they looked at in the Russell 3000 over 30 years, only seven percent of those stocks managed to earn a return of a thousand percent or more. Now hold on, somebody which is what you would have needed to offset. Correct. Are uh, the losers. So somebody actually, uh, so this kind of makes sense. I don't know if the thousand percent was over a 30 year period, like start to end. Or period during the period. Because how many stocks had a thousand percent run. And then gave it up. And might have only like a 300 percent, you know what I mean? All, I would imagine happens a lot. So that probably makes it bigger. But anyhow, the point is that, and there's been a lot of work on this, that if you miss the very big winners, Microsoft, Apple, et cetera, uh, you're basically shit out of luck. And on the other side of that, you say... 30% of stocks lost at least half of their... All right, so so 
there's more big losers than there are big winners. 7% huge winners, 30% huge losers. Right. So what if there was a way to hold a large diversified portfolio and screen out the losers? Now, obviously, maybe that's easier said than done, but I'm sure that there's certain quantifiable characteristics that you can do to determine what's what stock is likely to uh, All right. You could have put, port- throw some port- screens on that list. What, like, just for instance, you were saying uh, what did companies I say? growing earnings. So companies that have um, a, a price to earnings ratio, something very simple, three standard deviations higher than normal with with slow earnings growth, or cheap as a screen out. Yeah, or cheap stocks with growing accruals, or or maybe accounting irregularities, or cheap stocks trading below the two hundred day. I mean, there's a million things that you could do. Of course, and and even then, though, you want as many of them as possible. You still want a lot of stocks. You want a lot of stocks. So, okay. Now, yeah. what what did you want to now? What did you want to say about um, what the article missed? Like, what's the? That, I just did. What that even if you screen some stocks out? No, I'm saying it doesn't talk about that at all. Okay. It just basically implies that the reason why you should actually it doesn't talk about indexing. It really, it really says that if you hold just say your ten best ideas, right? That's probably not enough. Like ten great stocks won't be enough. Probably not. Now imagine one of them. One of them gets acquired. Another one gets taken private. Then you have to hunt the next two down, or else you have eight stocks. How active do you want to be on on revisiting this portfolio every year? Do so I-, I mean, I guess it's probably true that the best money managers have concentrated portfolios. Yeah. But that's like survivorship bias Buffett. because Buffett. all of the ones that don't. Well, let me ask you this question then. Gun to your head, I tell you, you have to have a concentrated portfolio. Um, however, I give you the choice. You can have the whole thing be concentrated or you can have half concentrated positions you really like and then the other half just own the index alongside of it. You would obviously do the second option. What? You could like do half S&P, yeah. half your biggest favorite names. Versus I don't have favorite names. But you're saying if I were to pay somebody to do have, that? Yeah. So I would do like 85% uh, beta, 15% like highest conviction names. I would pay somebody for that. Let, all right. So like so Apple is 6% of the S&P. The manager has extremely high conviction in Apple. Make it 10. And not Apple, I'm bearish. But I'm just saying, like, yeah. okay. All right. Hey, let us know what you think about concentrated positions, best idea portfolios. We love your feedback. We love your subscriptions. We love your likes, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.